We are live. Here we go. Live again for day four. Day four today. Who is joining me? Who is joining me today? Let's see. Let's see who's showing up today. You guys have been so awesome at showing up. Absolutely awesome. So let's take a look. Let's take a look. As you start to join, say hello. Say hello. Let me know how you're feeling as you start to join. I can see you guys are starting to join. Say hello. Let me know how you're feeling. Well done for showing up. Well done for being here. Got Chanel. Hey, Chanel. Morgan. Hey, hey. Aileen. Eileen. Kimberly. Hi, guys. Hey, Morgan. Watching for the first time. Watching first live. Kate. Hey, welcome. Well done, guys. Well done for showing up. Well done for showing up yet again. You're doing so well. You're doing so, so well. So this is day four. This is day four of your immersion, of your business immersion. You want to see this like a yoga teacher training, a yoga teacher training, a yoga business teacher training. Okay, we are going all in. We're going all in here, guys. So that's exactly how I want you to see it because you would show up for your teacher training, wouldn't you? There'd be no excuses for not getting up and, and getting to class. Okay, so well done. Well done for joining. As you're joining, let me know. Say hello and let me know how you're feeling. Lindsay says, I made an actual live one. Whoop! Misty's here. Hey, guys. Let me know. How are you guys feeling? How are you feeling? Hey, Abigail. Lisa's here. Christy's here. How are we feeling? Excited? How are we feeling? How are we feeling? I'm excited to be here with you guys again. It's actually becoming the highlight of my day. And we've had another exciting day today. So we've had another two videos, video trainings uh, released into the group. So have you guys watched the video trainings? Have you guys watched the video training trainings? Hey Jane, thank you for joining live. Well done. Abigail says it's very comprehensive. It certainly is. It certainly is. So, I mean, you know, for many of you, the business side of things, the business and marketing side of things will be quite new. You know, it, it could be a completely new thing. And as we know, as a yoga business owner, as a yogipreneur, you know, we have to wear all of these hats and, and run our business and promote ourselves. And quite often, some of this doesn't come naturally. Okay. So, you know, most teacher trainings don't offer the business side of yoga. You're lucky if you get maybe one class, you know, you get one class. And actually, that's where I got my light bulb moment for Digital Yoga Academy was when I was doing my teacher training and we had a one hour marketing class. Um, and the content of that class was what to put on a yoga flyer. And I ended up talking for the whole time and um, the other teachers, my friends on, on the course, you know, at lunchtime, they were like, oh, could you help me with my Facebook page? And, you know, they were asking a few questions. And, and so that's kind of where I got my little light bulb moment that sat on my shoulder, you know, nudging away at me for a year or so before I did something about it. So there you go. So it's quite interesting, isn't it, how these things can come about, how these things can come about and uh, the paths start to align. <laughs> Okay, so as you're joining guys, say hello, let me know how excited you are, let me know how you're feeling. Lisa says, I'm feeling great, she's at work so can't talk much, okay, we'll keep it down. Uh, very excited, so much great content, and the content isn't going away, you know, you no need to feel overwhelmed at all during this week because all of the content is here for you. Your job is to just put it into your calendar, even if you can't do it on a particular day, just make sure you schedule it in, even if it's for next week. Schedule it into the calendar. There's power in scheduling. There is power in scheduling and putting it down, putting it down. Yeah, Chanel, I'm pumped. <laughs> Go, girl. <laughs> love that. Absolutely love that. Me too. Me too. I'm pumped too. Well, I'm really happy that you guys are here and showing up again. And it's just been incredible, you know, being in the group and such energy, such energy in the group with everyone sharing their homework. So well done to everyone who's been sharing their homework. As you know, if you share your homework every day, we're giving you a little certificate here in the back office. You're getting a little star next to your name and everybody if you get the seven stars 
or six stars, sorry, you get six stars at the end of the week, and then on Sunday, during the masterclass, so have you guys seen the masterclass? Did you see my announcement today? Did you see my announcement today? Let me know in the, in the um, comments if you've seen my announcement. So on Sunday, there's a masterclass, and that's when I'm gonna announce the winner on the masterclass, okay? Right at the very beginning. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys who is the winner, who is the winner of uh, the three coaching calls with me, the three coaching sessions, and um, the winners for the, the prize, the homework prize. So that's exciting, something to, something to look forward to. But I absolutely love for you guys um, to join me on Sunday for the masterclass. Same time, seven o'clock. We're not changing anything, so seven o'clock is in here again. You just need to show up. Check your email, all the details are there. There's an event here in the group, and I just want you to RSVP on the event so I know who's gonna join me. Hey, cool, let's have a look, let's have a look. Yes, 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 I'm in, brilliant. So just let me know, just let me know on the event that you're definitely gonna join, that you're definitely gonna join, perfect, amazing. So, so yes, we've had two new video trainings today. We had um, the one from Yogi Times, the co-founders of Yogi Times, who um, I actually met them in Bali, actually, in, in February. And then I interviewed them last month. And they, Sophie and Jesse, absolutely gorgeous couple, really not lovely people. And they shared with us, you know, how community has really helped their business over the years and how it's changed and how the community has changed from being, you know, a kind of um, offline community to really taking it online. So they've seen everything, all the changes of, you know, how you can now connect with people online. So that was really interesting. And then also Erica Hartnick, who is a traveling yoga teacher, and she is the founder of Yoga Trade as well. So she was also sharing with us how to be business savvy in the yoga industry, and also you know, how to build a community when you're a traveling yoga teacher and all the challenges that come with that. So quite interesting today, guys. And if you haven't watched them yet, do catch up. Just go to the units and you can find, them, you can find it all there. Um, but really today, you know, I wanted to kind of continue on that theme of uh, community. And by this point in the immersion, you know, day four, um, you guys have already made, you've already done a lot of work, you know, to become more aligned in your business. Okay, I talk about alignment quite a lot. And we've talked about passion and purpose. You know, we've talked about how to, you know, create your yoga offering that's really linked to your passion and purpose. We talked about your ideal students and strategies to really kind of get closer to your ideal students so you understand who it is that you're serving. And these are really the first steps, yeah? These are the first steps. And when you pull these first steps together, you really start, you know, doing the work around creating magnetizing messaging magnetizing messaging when you're in alignment with all of these other parts that I've talked about then you can start to create your messaging that magnetizes the right people into your business and this is something I'm going to talk about more on Sunday in the masterclass so make sure you make sure you're there so today I really want to talk about the importance of community, okay? And uh, you know, I, I'll say we've got a really nice community here, haven't we, in this group that's just developed over the last week, which is absolutely incredible. You guys are doing your part in that, so well done. But I think, you know, when we think that we can bootstrap our way to success by doing it all on our own, we're really deceiving ourselves, okay? Because we never succeed on our own you know, in anything, in anything in life. So, and we, and we shouldn't want to either. We shouldn't want to succeed on our own because building a business isn't about being on our own, is it? It's about relationships. It's about connection. And all of that requires community. It requires community and specifically building relationships with other people that you can partner with and connect with. Okay, is this making sense? And 
Honestly, one of the biggest mistakes that you can make is to assume that you can create really great yoga offerings or you can create really great content and that that alone is going to be enough for you to grow your business. Quite simply, it's not enough on its own, okay? You need to involve other people if you want to grow and if you want to excel. This is really about collaboration over competition. Write that down, collaboration over competition. Let's have a look, let's have a look. I oh yeah, Shady says, I love how international it is. Me too, me too. I literally can't sleep at the moment, guys, because you're on so many different time zones and I'm con constantly checking in and messaging you all and stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna sleep for a week after this, I think. But it really is, it's really about collaboration, isn't it, over competition, rather than competing, with other yoga teachers collaborating, and I'll talk about it in a moment. But first of all, let's talk about your students. Yeah, let's talk about your students. So we're doing this, right? We're doing it for your students. So let's talk about how you can really create that sense of community with your students. And it's really satisfying, isn't it? It's really satisfying when you're in class and you start to see that students, especially students who have been coming for a long time to your classes, your regular students, are connecting with each other. Yeah, isn't that satisfying? Give me a thumbs up, give me, a, give me an, an emoji or a thumbs up, or some love. Isn't that satisfying when you see that, when you see students starting to connect with each other and they're moving their yoga friendship outside of the yoga class? You know, sometimes these, these relationships are spontaneous, right? And they are inevitable, I think, because it's a group of like-minded people coming together and yoga has such a powerful effect that you kind of end up wanting to link up with other people who share the same experience and who, who also love yoga. So you end up getting yoga friends. <laughs> and, you know, you might find that um, students start talk to each other, start talking to each other before class. Maybe they even start organising to go for a juice or something together after class. And all of this is good stuff. To see that, it's a really good sign. And then there are other times where your students might just need a little nudge from you to really kind of start creating this community atmosphere. And you can actually have a very special role you know, in developing these relationships. And I'll, I'll tell you why in a moment, why it's important. But of course, you know, it, it helps that you also know who your students are and you know their names, you recognize them, you know them by name. So you have to make the effort to do that. But, you know, especially if you're in a situation where you host your own classes, okay? Maybe you rent a church hall or you rent a space and it might be a little bit more difficult in, um, you know, bigger studios where you're kind of, you, you don't really have the time to be sitting before class with your students. But if you're in a situation where you do, and you have students that maybe arrive, you know, five or 10 minutes before class, and you're all sitting together waiting to start, you can actually lead some conversation. You can kind of encourage conversation from your mat, you know, from the front of the room. So if you've got that time, use that opportunity to really start some great conversation and help everyone to feel included. Because the reason why you're going to do this is because, you know, you're trying, you're, 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 um, you're facilitating, that's probably the better word, isn't it? A, a conversation with your students, because that ultimately is about building a strong bond and a community between your students. Because when you have that strong bond, your students stick together, right? Your students stick together and they show up. Has anyone got had experience of this? Is every, anyone here um, kind of recognizing what I'm talking about? Because I certainly see this with my students. And when this happens, they, they are more likely to show up. They show up, they're also, more likely to invest time and money in your higher priced offerings, so your retreats, okay? So I've had students that have met each other in class, and then when I've announced a retreat, they're like, oh, sh shall we go together? And they've come together. So has anyone um, had this similar kind of experience? We've got some thumbs up, yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> I love that. Lindsay says, sometimes I can't shut my classes up. <laughs> it's a really nice feeling though, isn't it? You know, for people to be talking and, you know, engaging with each other because you are helping to build community when that is happening. And, you know, these are the people, these are the people that are going to talk about your classes. These are your great, they're, they're your biggest fans, these people. You know, these are the ones that are going, these are the students that are going to come onto your retreats. And really, if you can, um, instigate that or facilitate it or encourage it, it's a game changer. It's a game changer. You know, if you can fill from the students in your class, if you can fill a retreat because the students have become friends, you know, as a result of your class and they decide to book together, that is a game changer. Okay? So you can see, you know, there are many benefits, you know, why you would encourage your community, your class, your student community to, to strengthen. Yeah, are we are we are we on with this one? Are we on with this one? Let's have a look. Yeah. So Harjit says she says have also taken my students on retreat too. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Lots lots of chatty. Lots more chatty. Already do this with my students. And you know what, it's quite a simple thing, isn't it? But it's about you being aware. It's about you being aware. I mean, there's, there's a big difference, isn't there, from just kind of showing up, teaching the class, and then going to actually, you know, communicating, properly communicating in, in engaging conversations and getting to know your students and actually taking the time to talk with them, to talk with them, yeah? So... Another simple thing you could do, you know, especially if it's a new class, is if you've got the time at the start of class, is just to have your students introduce each other, yeah? Um, I also find what, what works really well is adding a little bit of partner work during the class. It's a great way to, you know, it's a great icebreaker, and it just helps to add a little bit of warmth and connection between everyone in the room. And, you know, these types of things can really transform the mood, yeah? in the class, really transform the mood. And I, I kind of, I like to call these things like a sprinkle of magic, you know? We can just turn up, like I said, we can just turn up as the teacher and we can teach a really great class, but it's these little sprinkles of magic that will keep people coming back for more. Does that make sense? And I think, you know, when teachers really know the students well and the students know one another, the bond the bonds begin to form, and that's when you can really form a strong community with your students, okay? So these are, these are just some strategies that you can use that I've talked about today. Simple things, you know, encouraging conversation, getting people to introduce themselves, um, doing some partner work, really trying to bring your students together and being a little bit more aware of it is going to help to push things in the right direction, okay? So obviously there's, you know, other strategies. There are other strategies you can use and the online space and the platforms that are available to us here can really help you to foster the relationships with your existing students as well. You know, Facebook groups, for instance, is, is a really great way for your regular students to have like a space and you could be sharing your, um, you know, what you're doing each week in class and really help them to connect with each other online and outside of the studio. Okay, so that's a, another, um, another thing to consider is, is setting up a Facebook group. You know, rather than having a Facebook, well, you need to have a Facebook page okay but a facebook page isn't really a place for community like this yeah we wouldn't be having this we wouldn't be doing this on the digital yoga academy facebook page this happens inside a group so do consider a group yeah and i know somebody was asking about groups um a couple of days ago in the feed and i did a video training on this and i shared the link to it but if you want to have a look at that you can go to the digital yoga academy Facebook page, and there if you go to videos, you'll find my entire archive. Every single week I go live and I, I do a training, and there's a training there on um, setting up a Facebook group for your, your, for your yoga community. So take a look at that. Okay, so uh, the other community, okay, and just as important, is to foster relationships 
with other yoga teachers, okay? Just as you guys are doing in this group, okay? We all want to connect with other people, remember? We have that desire to feel like we belong. This is a fundamental um, part of the human experience. So a sense of belonging and connection within a community is really essential to our well-being. We all know this, right? And without it, we can feel a bit isolated. We can feel a bit lonely, disengaged. And teaching yoga doesn't have to be lonely. But many teachers feel a sense of isolation. Okay, I want you guys to put your hands up now if you feel like that in the yoga industry. As a yoga teacher, do you feel isolated? Do you ever feel isolated? And, it, and it's, you know, it's even in a industry that's built on connection, I hear so many times of, you know, teachers who feel isolated and feel, feel lonely in the space. Let's have a look. So Harjit says, I created a WhatsApp group. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I mean, if you have a strong connection, I think that works if you've got a strong connection with your students and they have as well. It's a little bit more personal, isn't it, getting into a WhatsApp group, but that's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Eileen says, can you share the link again? Is that for the, the video training, the Facebook video training? I will do. I will, I will share it. Don't worry. I'll share it in a little while. Love sprinkles of magic. Me too. <laughs> it's all about the sprinkles of magic, guys. It's those things. If you can add the bits of magic in there, you know, it's, it is really a game changer. That's what's going to keep bringing people back. That's what's going to keep bringing people that. So Helen says, I teach families in a seaside town and we often go to the park or beach for ice cream after yoga on Friday. I mean, isn't that just beautiful? Isn't that, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous, love that. Yeah, exactly. So yes, teaching can feel isolating, uh, but I like to link and share with other teachers. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Raki. Um, and also Karen says, yes, especially being new and starting my own class, but not linked to a studio. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Lindsay says, not anymore. You have us. Woohoo! Magic here to show up. Exactly. There you go. So, yeah. So it, it's definitely something I, I hear. Definitely with the teachers that I work with. Um, so and. You know, I think, you know, in the past, I, I've been very guilty of isolating myself, right? Especially when the work mounts up and, you know, life gets a little bit busy and things start piling up and it can just be really easy, can't it, to say, oh, actually, I need to do this or, you know, tell yourself stories that you're not going to get things done or reach your goals and then isolating yourself becomes the answer, right? And... So I've been in that place, so I recognize it when it shows up. And I know for, you know, for yoga teachers, when you're not teaching and you're working on your business, you're doing this on your own, aren't you? You're doing this on your own, and that can get lonely. And when you get lonely, that can, at that point, when you get into that place where you feel lonely, that is when you start doubting yourself. That is when you start maybe considering giving up and going back to your day job, right? If you have made that transition. And the answer to that is community. It's community and it's connection, pure and simple. It is the cure for everything. It's the cure for everything. And when you build your community of other yoga teachers and you actually make the time to connect with them on a regular basis, this gives you the chance to, you know, speak up, ask for support, learn from other people's experiences, share what you're doing, get feedback on what you're trying to do in your business, share ideas, collaborate. This is when we get good at business, guys, when we start choosing to show up with other people. Yeah, does this make sense? Rather than struggling and trying to do everything on your own, this is why we need a community of yoga teachers around us. It's why it's so important. We're all creating a, a, an impact in the world. And if we go with collaboration over competition, it shouldn't matter about sharing what you're trying to do in your business. Okay, we're all working towards the same goal of creating bigger impact in the world. Let's have a look. How is this? How is this sitting with you today? How is this sitting? We've had some newbies join. We've got Louise. We've got Erica. We've got Yale. 
Welcome, guys. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. So yeah, this is where we get good at business when we when we bring people around us. Yeah, because chances are we can't uh, we don't have the funds to bring a team in around us. Quite often, you know, most teachers are working on their own. So, and I, I love that this is already happening in the group, okay? There's been a few examples over the, over the last few days. Um, we've had Mon Monse, 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 is, is she here, is she here? Let's have a look. Monse, Monse, I think that's how you pronounce your name. Um, she was asking if anyone would like to meet up in person. So she, you know, she asked if anyone would like to meet up in person after this week um, to carry on learning. She also suggested um, meeting up on Sunday to watch the masterclass together. Tea and accountability, she called it. So I love that. That's absolutely amazing. And then we had um, Raki also was asking if there was anyone in the group that works with children and teens and families. Um, and she said, oh, I know Aaron and Amanda do, but I'd love to know who else would like to connect. This is brilliant, guys. This is what it's about, right? This is exactly what it's about. And then we've also had Naomi. Naomi was asking for some advice. She's created a Facebook header that she's designed, and she was asking for some advice. She had three options. And loads of you have been supporting her and connecting, you know, connecting with her. So this is absolutely what it's about. This is absolutely what it's about. So well done, guys. Yay. So Haji says, I've just recently started to collaborate with another teacher. Mackenzie is in the house. Yay. Mackenzie's one of my students. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> High five to you. Amazing. Yeah, so she says, I started going out for coffee and chats with another local teacher. It was amazing to hear her perspective. This is it, this is it, this is so it, okay? So ask yourself now, have you been doing this? Could you do it? Could you set something up, you know, a tea, a tea and accountability for next week to meet up with some other yoga teachers? Because you all know other yoga teachers local to you in your network, yeah? So, okay, so I'm gonna put it out to you guys now in the comments, and I'm gonna read out some comments. What ideas do you have for collaborating with other yoga teachers? What ideas do you have for collaborating with other yoga teachers? Yeah? Type away. Type away. I'm going to read out some ideas. Type away. Let me know. What ideas have you got? Because this is a really easy way to expand your community. The more you collaborate with other people, the more opportunity you have to build community, yeah? You have more opportunity to extend your reach the more you collaborate with other people. So what ideas have we got for, for working in partnership and collaborating with other yoga teachers, yeah? And remember, remember this, the best collaborations, the best partnerships, are when each partner brings something different to the table, brings something different to the table. They are the best partnerships. So you really need to think about when you're working with another teacher, you need to discuss each other's skill set and passions, and then see how you can find something that complements what you're offering. That's the way to do it. Let's have a look, so I've got some comments. Okay, workshops, yeah, make challenges together, exactly. Yoga teacher getaway, oh, I love that. Yoga teacher getaway, I have a getaway, I have a getaway in September for yoga teachers, which I'm doing with, which I'm collaborating with another yoga teacher called Celeste Pereira. So that's my collaboration, I'm doing it with Celeste, it's a, it's a business retreat, well, I'm doing all the business stuff and then she's teaching um, advanced sequencing and anatomy. So we're collaborating. We're doing that in Portugal in September. Let's have a look. Workshops. Uh, Lorna says, I don't have a support group in terms of fellow yoga teachers in my area. The French are a bit funny like that with foreigners. I have to drive a long way just 
just to join some yoga activities like kirtan and meditation. Recently, I collaborated with a sound bath therapist in my yin yoga. Exactly. So, you know, having a think about other things like sound therapy or meditation teachers, it doesn't necessarily have to be you know, specifically yoga. What skills can you bring together? What skill sets can you bring together? Collaborating to do fun yoga challenges on social media. Exactly. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Some of the teachers in my, um, in my existing coaching program, which Mackenzie is part of, have been doing that. They've been collaborating on a yoga challenge together. And Michelle, make lives to share knowledge or, or podcasts. Exactly. Oh, right. Make lives like this. Yeah. To share knowledge. Exactly. Hook up together and do a live together. Exactly. So, um, uh, again, Celeste Pereira. Do you guys know Celeste? Give me uh, some love if you do. She's doing a um, joint partnership at the moment with Adele Bridges, and it's um, for hypermobile yogis. Hypermobile yogis, it's called. It's on Instagram. So they've been doing that together, and they do lots of lives together, podcasts. You know, more and more yoga teachers are starting podcasts now. It's a really great way to extend your reach online, get more exposure, and also position yourself as an expert. So you could, you know, approach other yoga teachers who have podcasts and approach them with your idea of how, you know, what you want them to interview about, interview you about. Let's have a look. Be a member of other yoga teacher groups, um, for example, who you trained with for 200 hour yoga. Yeah, exactly. That's it. If you can't meet people in person, you know, what other Facebook groups are there? There are loads of Facebook groups. There are loads of Facebook groups for yoga teachers. Absolutely, tons. Do workshops together, sound healing, yoga and dance, sharing a workshop or a retreat day with someone who has other training or experience different to mine. Exactly. And you know what? Even like yoga retreats, if you've never done a yoga retreat before, to share the responsibility with someone else and to be able to put both of your brains together to work out logistics and everything and you know share the tasks and responsibilities, it just helps, right? It just helps. It helps so much. It takes the stress away. You've got someone else to bounce ideas on. Uh-huh. Let's have a look. What else? Uh... Yeah, so Lindsay says, a collaboration I'd love to do, to collaborate with someone who can do sound baths, and when it comes to yoga therapy, someone who's skilled in anatomy, when it comes to physical healing, yeah. So a lot of my events that I do here in London, I do like a monthly day retreat, it's like a four-hour experience, and I always have somebody to come in and do a gong bath or some kind of sound healing, and I mix it up each time so that it's different for my community, so they're not getting the same all the time. So that's great. You guys have got loads of ideas. Woo! Love it. Absolutely love it. Getting the creative juices flowing on a Thursday evening. Well done. So this is what today's homework is about, funnily enough. So I'm really encouraging you guys to sit down and brainstorm, first of all, who you might work with, yeah? And it might even be people in this group, and that's okay, but you're going to make a list of yoga teachers who you who you know personally, and that's the important thing. It's people who you already know, okay? Because I really want you to take action, and your personal network is the best place to start, okay? If you start thinking outside of your personal network, you might get a little bit stumped with, oh, well, well why are they gonna wanna do something with me? That's the fear I hear quite a lot. So let's just start with your personal network. That's the best place to start with your te with teachers you know, people in the space that you know, okay? Because we all know it's not what you know, it's who you know, right? But the caveat on that is also about who you don't know yet. And I'm gonna expand on that during the masterclass on Sunday. So you really need to make sure that you, that you turn up to that, okay? Because I'm gonna expand on that, how you build your network beyond the yoga teachers that you know, okay? But today we start with our personal network. So you're gonna come up with a list, and then you're gonna come up with some ideas to collaborate with each of those teachers. Are we in? Are we in? If we're ready for this, type I am ready in the comments. If we're in for this, are we in? I'm going to share. It's just a one-page workbook, okay? You can just use it as a prompt. 
Use it as a prompt today. And um, don't forget to share your workbook. So just take a picture of it, or if you've done it in your journal, just take a picture of it, upload it into a separate post, hashtag day four homework, okay? And I'll share all of that in a post um, after this live. After this live. Amazing. So yeah, I am ready. Well done, guys. Well done for showing up yet again. Absolutely loving it. Absolutely loving it. So that's it. So you're going to really just get the creative juices flowing. That's exactly what it's about. And before I go, make sure you've got the masterclass in your, in your calendar. For those of you who joined a little bit late, this is Sunday, same time. So Sunday the 14th the same time 7 p.m. UK time if you show up there's something that I'm offering for for just 20 people okay there's a special special something um, for just 20 people so schedule it in your calendar now and if you can't join live there's also something for those of you that can't join live as well okay but I'm going to be sharing three yogi preneur essentials to create a profitable and purposeful yoga biz that changes lives. Okay, that is the title. Oh, it's a bit of a long title, isn't it? But that's the title um, for the masterclass. So I hope that you're gonna join me because this is a special one-off, powerful masterclass. And it may, be, may well be our final time to connect like this here in the group. So I'd absolutely love for you to show up um, make sure you've got pen and paper because you're going to get lots of value and you know it's actionable valuable content that you're going to get okay always encourage you to take action no matter what I share with you there's always some action points okay there's always something for you to take away and work on yeah okay so and don't forget I'll be announcing the winners for the homework challenge and also the winner of the three coaching sessions with me during the uh, masterclass as well. It's going to be epic. Who's excited? I'm excited. I'm really excited for Sunday, and I'm working on it, working so hard on it at the moment for you guys. So I really hope you're going to show up. Okay, I'm going to leave that with you today. Please catch up on anything that you've missed. And, yeah, that's it. Bye. Bye, guys. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow for another epic day. Thank you, guys. See you soon, see you soon.